Hey guys, Stanford here from FUN, and today I'm with Team 7157 Mubonics here at the Orange County Regional. I've got Zach, I've got Austin, I've got Aaron with me. We're going to be walking through this incredible machine. Um, they've got a sick under the bumper intake, turret, amp mechanism, boat hook climbers, a uh, really cool feature on this robot. So stay tuned for all that and more on another episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on FUN is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Zach, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so let's talk about the intake first. So our intake is powered by a Kraken on a three to one gear ratio. If you zoom in over here under, we have our mechanism wheels that push it to our feeder. And if you see under here, our first two, uh, we do have cat tongue for the first two um, rollers. And this um, sponsor panel also helps us with compression of the node to guide it back into gear. Um, let's also move to our climbers. So what's something, uh, something that's unique about our climbers is that it's not your average telescope, it is a boho climb. So as you can see, it's pretty much like a big roll of tape. Um, just to get, get extend it all the way up to like the frame perimeter. We just put a, right here. We have some 3D printed guiders that help stabilize the um, the boat hook, boat hook over here. And if you see this little poly part right here, it allows the boat hook to not unravel on itself. And both of these boat hooks are powered with Falcons, both on max planetaries with a uh, 36 to one gear ratio. What had you guys kind of arrive at this boat hook design for this robot? Yeah, so first we just had, you know, your average telescope. However, it was just very heavy. Like each um, telescoping arm was like seven pounds. Um, these combined weigh around like six pounds which compared to the telescopes, which weighed around 15 pounds in total. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and go through some of the other uh, systems on this robot. Yeah, awesome. So ne next up, um, we have our turreted shooter. So this year we just, it was, a lot of teams are debating between a turret and not a turret. And we felt that in auto, a turret would be extremely valuable. And additionally, uh, under defense, a turret would be extremely valuable. Because defense the same is extremely killer. Um, and so, yeah, we went to the turret using the uh, West Coast Products motion blocks. Um, and then after that, we have our hood. So our hood, initially we went with a max planetary gearbox on our hood. Um, but over time with our vision system that Aaron's gonna talk about later, um, we realized it was too unreliable with all the slack that, get, that it gave. So we decided to run with a custom gear, gearbox with lots of shim tape, um, chain for reliability. Um, and with this rack mechanism, rack mechanism that was 3D printed by one of our sponsors out of steel um, to really give it that rigidity so we can move as fast as possible. Um, and then if you go over to our shooter, I don't know if it's actually, yeah. Um, we have feeder uh, feeder rolls right here that bomb one's cat tongue and we have a set point where we can intake from our uh, intake and then we have dead axle right here um, that moves into our shooter, our double flywheel. All right, so let's go ahead and have a demo of uh, this run, this thing's note path and uh, see how it makes the robot. Yeah, so first it just goes through um, the first two rollers, which has a cat tongue, as I said earlier. Then it goes through these mechanism wheels, which sensor it, along with our three printed sensors right here. And then it goes into our feeder and into our shooter. One of our feeders also has a cat tongue. And as, um, <laughs> as Austin said earlier, these second feeder wheels are um, just like dead axle. So these are the powered ones, these are just dead axle. And then it goes to our flywheels. So I know a lot of teams did a lot of testing uh, to get their shooter the way that they wanted it. So uh, what kind of testing did you guys do and what iterations did you go through to get this shooter uh, shooting how you wanted it to? Yeah, um, honestly, we just kind of ran this thing into the wall and saw what broke. Um, and we just iterated it like that, honestly. And we just took a hundred shots, saw how many it made. If it didn't meet our standard, which was nearly a hundred percent, um, we remade it with various changes. Um, wheel spacing, the compression on the notes, this is uh, two inches of compression on the note, I believe. Uh, so it's 10 inches or 12 inches. Um, and 
we just iterated over and over again to get that perfect shot that we really wanted. Yeah. And then uh, go ahead and take us through your amp mechanism. Yeah. So this amp mechanism right here, um, we were really inspired by Rush um, when we saw the reveal video. And we realized with our shooter before, it, we didn't have a reliable amp. And so our poor Wine we were really crippled um, not being able to score that amp reliably. So we decided to pivot and use um, this really simple, robust mechanism. Um, two hard stops here, just up and down, zeroing and scoring. And it's been super great for us um, with a little current limit to make sure it stays down. Um, awesome. Yeah. All right, and then let's go and go through some of the uh, software and vision that makes this thing run. Hi, yeah, so the software that runs through this, uh, our whole turret and wrist hood system runs through using our pose to calculate the correct, the correct angle to shoot at. So we have three cameras here, along with two PCs near the intake of our bot. And all of these combined allow us to get roughly a good pose to track the speaker correctly. So if I enable real quick. And over here, you can see a little part where our robot is. And as I drive, it should track the speaker. So to tune our wrist, we just got a bunch of known set points and interpolated the values between them. And that way we can get a roughly reliable set point for intermediate shots. And um, so in both like vision terms and in terms of straight up shooting terms, uh, what's your guys' range with this shooter? What's the farthest I'd... you guys usually take a shot from? The farthest that we would normally take a shot from would be, I guess, the end of a wing, but it's a little like iffy. So a shot that we like to take is right under the chain. Um, that's usually like from the chain to the speaker. That's usually our like our max range for the best accuracy. Anything farther than that, it's a little iffy. We can make it, but it might miss. Thank you guys so much for allowing us to come by and see this amazing machine. These guys have been killing it here at Orange County. So once again, thank you guys very much, and good luck out there on the field. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you, and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.